In this lecture we will look at a particular type of stochastic control problem which has been studied in, in, uh, in depth uh, and has been analyzed in many different ways. Uh, so, in this lecture we will uh, look at a stochastic control problem which comprise in which uh, the, the dynamics of the system comprises of uh, is a, it takes a linear form and the cost of the system or uh, the loss function of the system is it takes a quadratic form. So, this is what is popularly known as the linear system with quadratic cost type problem, linear systems So, linear system with quadratic cost is uh, has in it inbuilt a number of beautiful coincidences and what I hope to bring to you today is, is a, a glimpse into what the, 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 the nature of the, the, the way in which these things coincide uh, so elegantly so as to for us to be able to eventually solve for the optimal policy in closed form. So, a linear system comprises of system the dynamics given in this in the following way x k plus 1 is evolves as a k x k plus b k u k plus w k. Now, k takes values from 0 to n minus 1. So, a k b k here are matrices. So, these are uh, these are known to us w k is a is a sequence of disturbances. So, these these will be we will assume are independent random variables. So, w k are independent we will also assume that they have mean 0. So, we will assume that w k have mean 0 and we will also we will assume also that they have their covariances are finite, sec finite second moment. So, w w the expectation of w k w k transpose this uh, this this particular uh, this uh, this these are this is a matrix with some with with finitely many uh, with finitely many uh, in which the values are all finite. Okay. The problem is to minimize a cost which is given as follows the expectation of we have a terminal cost written as x n transpose q n x n plus the summation of stage wise cost k equals to 0 to n minus 1 x k transpose q k x k plus u k transpose r k u k. This here is the uh, is the cost and what we want to minimize this is overall policies we will we will be looking for Markov policies in this particular problem. Now, the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the x k's the u k's as I said are are these are the a k's and b k's are matrices x k's and u k's are vectors remember x k u k are vectors of appropriate dimension. These are vectors of appropriate dimension a k b k q k and r k these are matrices. Of these we do not assume anything specific about a k and b k, but we will assume something about q k and r k we will assume r k here is a positive definite matrix. We will assume q and we will assume q k is positive semi definite. Okay. 
the uh, as I said these uh, WKs have been assumed to be independent and uh, with mean 0 and, and finite variance. So, this problem that I've, I have written out which is the pro where a system evolves uh, according to a linear equation like this and uh, the cost is quadratic is a very popular form and it, it, uh, it is often uh, called the linear quadratic regulator. The reason it is called the linear quadratic regulator is that it is in a particular form it can be thought of as a problem of regulating uh, the a system. So, regulation means to follow a particular trajectory. So, a trajectory so for example, one may be given a, a trajectory for instance as x 0 bar x 1 bar dot 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 x n bar as a given trajectory and one wants to given trajectory and what one what one wants to do is to stay as close to that trajectory as possible while at the same time optimizing the amount of energy that it that is that is needed in coming in, in staying close to that trajectory. So, in that case the cost that we incur can be thought of as the is something of this form x n minus x bar n transpose q n minus q bar n plus the sum from k equal 0 to n minus 1 x k minus x bar k transpose q k times x k minus x bar k plus u k transpose r k u k. So, notice here that the, the cost here look at the form of the cost this here is the terminal cost as above that captures somehow the distance you are from the given reference trajectory. So, x n minus x bar n uh, is, is appearing here it is a skewed dis this here is a skewed distance between x n and x bar n these here are skewed distances between x k and x bar k and this here is the um, cost on, on the energy that we spend in, in applying this control. So, it is it's u k transpose r k u k that is the cost that is coming here. Th this entire thing here is our uh, this I should write this bracket on on this side here. So, this entire thing is, is, is our total this is the total cost that we incur in regulating our, our given system towards the trajectory x, x 0 bar to x n bar. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will solve this particular problem using once again the dynamic programming equation. So, what the agenda for now is to apply dynamic programming. to solve the above problem and by above problem I mean the not this specific form of regulation, but, uh, but, but this, this general form that I have written out here. Okay. So, this is the problem that we will be looking to solve the, the, the one in the red box. Now, the dynamic programming equation asks us to do uh, do the following it first asks us to set up j n we write j n of x n for every x n to be equal to the terminal cost and what was our terminal cost the terminal cost was q n x n transpose q n x n. So, we write this to be equal to x n transpose q n x n and we write this for all remember this has to be written for all x n. So, for every value of the state. So, in other words for all vectors x n the function j n is defined in this quadratic way as q n transpose x n transpose q n x n. So, this this here we have written this for k equal to n. Let us 
let us now write this for um, let us now write this for for n minus 1. So, let me use the the index t rather than k. So, for t this is for t equal to n and this is now for t equal to n minus 1. For t equal to n minus 1 I have j n minus 1 of x n minus 1 is equal to remember this is equal to the minimum of the this is going to be the minimum of the stage wise cost plus the the cost to go. Now, the, uh, the, the cost to go the, at time n minus 1 is simply is simply j n of x n all right. So, we will write it uh, write it that way. So, this is going to be the minimum over all actions u n minus 1 of the expectation of the stage wise cost. Stage wise cost for us is x n minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus now j n of x n. But remember x n itself can be written through these dynamics here in terms of x n minus 1 and u n minus 1. So, I need to write this but I need to substitute this with k as with k equal to n minus 1. So, that then gives me j n that then gives me j n of a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1. Now, I will expand this out now and write out a, a complete expression. This is a, going to be a long expression. I have a minimum over minimum over u n minus 1 of the expectation of x minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus now this i i, I j n of anything is equal to uh, j n of any x n is equal to x n transpose q n x n. So, I am going to substitute substitute this this entire thing as in x n here. So, that give, would give me a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1 transpose q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1 this expectation is what uh, this expectation and the, and then after uh, this is the expectation here uh, that we get and once we minimize this over u n minus 1 what we will get is is our value function or the cost to go which is j n minus 1 as a function of x n minus 1 ok. Now, our task now is to first identify like we have done before what is random here and what is dependent on u n minus 1. So, the first thing to, to uh, let us first look at the expectation and try to see what is which of these terms are actually random. So, notice here that x n minus 1 here denotes any particular state at time n minus 1. So, for us x n minus 1 is actually deterministic since this is being written for all remember for all x n minus 1 just like we wrote it wrote the one above for all x n. So, this is being written for all x n minus 1. So, uh, and so in other words this is here x n minus 1 is simply a parameter ok. So, so it is not a random variable. So, that is so x n minus 1 is not random. U n minus 1 is, is a function of x n minus 1 it is also not random. So, as a consequence x n minus 1 is not random u n minus 1 is not random as a consequence we are left with only one term which is actually random and that term is w n minus 1. 
Now, but W n minus 1 appears in this kind of form here, it appears inside this quadratic. So, what we will do is expand this out in order to pull out the various terms of W n minus 1 that are dependent on W n minus 1. So, let us write this out more explicitly, we get therefore that j n minus 1 of x n minus 1 is the minimum over u n minus 1 of. So, what I will do is I will remove I will pull the expectation inside over only this only the quadratic term the only the quadratic term here. So, that so I am going to write out the remaining two terms as they are. So, this minimization now is is going to be x n minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 r n minus 1 n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus the expectation the expectation of this term. So, this term is a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1 So, now this let us look at what this quadratic is going to amount to. So, this quadratic will have terms that are firstly not dependent at all on w n minus 1 because those terms will come when, when this term here multiplies with this term here. Okay. So, you will get a term which does not depend on w n minus 1 at all and because those are those will involve only x n minus 1 and u n minus 1 and uh, those are not random they will come out of the expectation. In addition, we will have a term that in which there is w n minus 1 appears in a linear fashion. So, it will be w n minus 1 times something uh, something uh, uh, on the other side. So, w n minus 1 times q n times maybe this uh, times this term. Again, a term that is involves x n minus 1 and u n minus 1. A third term that we will have is the is is a term that involves w n minus 1 in a quadratic fashion. So, let us let us write these out. So, this this is the minimum over x n minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 transpose q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1. So, this here is my first term which depends only on x n minus 1 and u n minus 1. Now, I have a term that depends linearly on w n minus 1. So, it is w n minus 1 transpose q n times a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 and then I have a term that depends quadratically on u n w n minus 1. All right. So, this is this is the expression that we get. Now, let us let us look at these the uh, these terms a little more closely. 
So, this term here which is linear in W n minus 1, this term has, uh, has all these other terms that are deterministic. So, consequently the expectation of this is really the expectation of W n minus 1 the whole transpose all of this and W n minus W's that we, we decided were actually we had assumed were all mean 0. So, as a consequence of that this term actually is 0. So, this term is equal to 0 right. So, what we are therefore left with is only the is only the third term here, but the third term is one which depends only on w n minus 1 and has no dependence on on u n minus 1 at all alright. So, what we are uh, let us now look at the uh, the expression as that remains therefore. So, there we are we are we have this term which does not depend on u n minus 1, we have these terms which depend on u n minus 1, but they depend on u n minus 1 in a quadratic way. So, there is a quadratic here and there is a quadratic here also in u n minus 1. So, as a result when we minimize this over u n minus 1, we will get something where u n minus 1 is depend is uh, we get a linear you get a linear equation for u n minus 1. That linear equation can be written out as follows. We can one after we can, so essentially the way you find that is by differentiating differentiating this entire expression here and putting the derivative equal to 0. So, if I differentiate this entire expression and putting the derivative equal to 0, I, I, can, I get that u n minus 1 the optimal u n minus 1 u n minus 1 star let us say must satisfy r n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 u n minus 1 equals negative of b n minus 1 transpose q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1. In other words u n minus uh, in a, uh, this, this equation must be satisfied by the optimal by the optimal u n minus 1 the. So, differentiating and putting differentiating and putting gradient equal to 0 with respect to gradient with respect to u n minus 1 equal to 0 gives us this ok. So, that gives us that in other words u n minus 1 star should be should have the following form it is negative of r n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 inverse b n minus 1 q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1. Notice that we have uh, we have actually now as a result of the uh, as a result of our uh, the dynamic programming equation uh, dynamic programming theorem we have actually now fo found what the uh, what the policy or what the optimal uh, decision rule is at time n minus 1. We find we have found that at time n minus 1 the optimal thing to do is actually to apply a linear function on the state x n minus 1. So, this it is and the linear the coefficients are given by this complicated form here right. So, this let uh, we can write uh, we, this this particular thing let us write this as as l n minus 1 x n minus 1 ok. So, this is what is uh, what we conclude here where l n minus 1 is is this, but this is only given us uh, the optimal policy let us substitute this back in the substitute this optimal u n up uh, up in this in this form here in this equation here and we from there we can conclude that j n minus 1 of x n minus 1 
is equal to x n minus 1 transpose k n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus the expectation of w n transpose w n minus 1 transpose q n w n minus 1. Now, what is this k n minus 1? Well, what all notice that we have u n minus 1 is given as a linear function of x n minus 1. So, u n minus 1 star is some matrix times x n minus 1. Okay. So, once I substitute that out here, I because my notice the expression that I am going to get, my x n is appearing in a quadratic form, my u n is appearing, u n minus 1 here is appearing in a quadratic form out here all uh, uh, un is also appearing in a quadratic form or in a bilinear form with xn un minus 1 and xn minus 1 so once i substitute un star in this sort of in this particular form here the resulting expression is going to be the resulting expression is going to be quadratic in xn minus 1 so it's going to be xn minus 1 transpose some matrix that i'm going to denote by kn minus 1 xn uh, times xn minus 1 I also have this trailing term which was this constant that was left behind when we took the expectation that term appears here. So, for completeness I will also write out what uh, what k n minus 1 is. So, k n minus 1 is equal to a n minus 1 transpose q n minus q n b n minus 1 times b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 plus r n minus 1 the whole inverse b n transpose q n times a n minus 1 plus q n minus 1 this is this is the expression for the matrix here k n minus 1. All right. Okay. So notice that uh, notice that this matrix here is actually symmetric. If you if you stare at this a bit, you will realize that this is a, this matrix is actually symmetric. In fact, this is not only symmetric; it's actually positive semi-definite. Uh, uh, this is a positive semi-definite matrix, uh, and uh, as a result, the the uh, the val the the function that we have here. The, the function the, the, the function the value function that we get here is also a convex function this here j n minus 1 as a function of x n minus 1 is in fact a convex function remember we had started off assuming that um, these uh, all these uh, q n minus 1s and r n minus q n minus 1s were uh, q's were all positive semi definite and the r's were positive definite what we have so uh, so uh, we uh, we we had that the terminal cost and the value function as a result of that was also a convex function and what we are getting now is that the uh, that the cost to go at time n minus 1 is also a convex function okay it's a it's it's a convex and and moreover it's not just convex it's also a quadratic function of x n minus 1 so what what we are therefore seeing is that the structure of the uh, of a lot of this problem is actually being retained when we go from step n to step n minus 1. So, what we will do ne in the next lecture is actually you uh, exploit this to in fact form find the optimal policy and an expression for the optimal cost.